Good morning and welcome to Cincinnati Issues. I'm Lincoln Ware. We're here every Sunday morning, 630 on Star 64. We've got a great show lined up for you today. Uh, we've got Angela Singleton coming up a little later on in the show. Plus, we've got Phil Heimlich and he's with the Republicans Against Trump. We'll talk to him about his organization. Right now, Caitlin Tiggs is Miss Ohio for America. Is that right? Did I get it right? Yes. Yes. Miss Ohio. Now, how did you become Miss Ohio for America? Tell us a little bit about that. Oh, my gosh. It's been quite a journey. So I've been competing for six years. And on my last try, I finally won the title on July 11th. So I've held the title for one month now. And so do you travel around the state? Or are you going to travel around the country? How, how does that work? Yeah, so I'm traveling all over the state, um, working in my platform, which is women's leadership development, as well as highlighting the women leaders throughout the state. And I'm going to be taking this platform to the national competition in Las Vegas, hopefully this coming October. Now, you've got a, a master's degree, is that correct? I'm pursuing my master's degree pursuing in applied psychology. applied psychology. Okay, now tell us a little bit about that. What is applied psychology? Well, so psychology is the study of human behavior. So we're just learning how to apply that behavior. Okay. And the concentration is in community psych. So working in the social justice arena and advocating for community issues, learning about how um, external forces um, really just play a role in people's behavior and the decisions they make. Now, do you uh, talk to a lot of uh, younger uh, girls and they see you, you know, Miss Ohio for America, they see the crown, and how do you influence the young, younger women around the state? Oh, yes, so I'm a mentor, you know, and so when girls see me in the crown and sash, it's like they're so drawn to me, and it's like a microphone. It's an opportunity for me to talk to them about the things that are important to them, right? And I also use this title to show them that this is an opportunity for them to be able to compete in pageants and use it as a catalyst to advocate for the things that they want to do. So that's kind of what I use this title for. And uh, when I'm mentoring, I let them know that they're able to do whatever they want to do. And pageantry is an avenue for that. Yes, yes. And uh, now with uh, uh, Kamala Harris in there, that's even more of a motivation for them. I'm, I'm sure you'll be talking about that as you travel around the state. Yes, it's a very important year with the election coming up. And so definitely seeing a black woman is um, very influential. Seeing women in leadership positions in general has been very influential. So I think her um, possibly becoming the vice president is going to be huge in um, influencing girls into positions of power for sure. Now, and there's a lot of troubled young girls around the state, around the country, and uh, when you see some of them that, you know, you could almost talk to them and tell they're headed in the wrong direction, you know, that they're, they're going to be uh, a life full of trouble and who knows, end up maybe jail. How do you talk to them and maybe steer them in the right direction? Oh, so that's one thing that I want to do with this title is go into the difficult populations that have been typically neglected. And I just want the girls to know that just because you've made some mistakes in your past, that doesn't mean that you can't turn your life around and work um, in the things that you want to work in and accomplish the goals you want to accomplish. So I definitely use this title for that for sure. And I think it's important to remember that we've all made mistakes. I mean, look at our current administration and all of the mistakes that they've made, but have still been able to accomplish the goal of um, being involved in politics and working in the things they want to work in. So I think it's just a mind frame type of thing. All right, tell us a little bit about you. Uh, where did you grow up? Uh, where did you attend uh, college? And tell us a little bit about you. Yes, yeah, so I'm a lifelong Ohioan. Grew up in the Dayton area and spent some time in Mason, Ohio for a little bit and then came back to Dayton to go to school at Wright State. So I have my bachelor's in psychology from Wright State and now I'm in Cincinnati. And being Miss Ohio, I get to travel all over Ohio. I've lived all over Ohio. So, like, I've been Ohioan for life for sure. <laughs> all right. Well, that's great. And, hey, we appreciate you coming on with us this morning. And uh, we look forward to seeing you again somewhere throughout the state of Ohio. So you uh, take care of yourself. And thank you for coming yes, on. Yes, thank you very much. All right. Let's take a break, and then we'll come back. One of <laughs> Cincinnati Issues we will be back in a moment. And 
and we are back with Taylor Singleton, and she's with We Rock the Spectrum. It's a kid's gym, and you have the big grand opening that's coming up. Well, this show airs on Sunday, so the grand opening was yesterday. And tell us a little bit about it. This is a different type of kid's gym. Tell us a little bit about that, Taylor, and welcome to the show. Yeah, thank you for having me. Um, so We Rock the Spectrum is a sensory gym that is an international franchise based in California. Um, so we kind of decided to start our own We Rock the Spectrum here in Cincinnati um, as we have a nephew um, that has a sensory related disability. Um, so for us, it's very per personal as we saw that he had some difficulties being included with his typically developing peers. Um, so when we first found out about We Rock the Spectrum um, as a kids gym um, as a franchise, uh, we just kind of knew and we felt that this was something that not only our family needed, um, but as well as our community. Um, oh. So we rock this. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. So we rock the spectrum um, was founded to provide a place for children of all ability levels to play and grow together. Um, so it is very much an inclusive gym. Um, so it may have the word spectrum which is often aligned with autism in the name. However, it is for all kids of all abilities. And uh, so, so if a kid has, you know, a disability with his legs and he just can't move or arms or something, not as agile as the kids his age or size, then this gym is for, for that kid. Yes, so it's for all kids, you know, no matter what their abilities or disabilities may be. Okay, now you're located in Dillonville. Yes, at the Dillon right Bill. next to the IGA. Okay, okay. And uh, we're looking at some of the apparatus here, looking at some of the, uh, can you see what we're looking at there? Yes. Tell us what yes. we're looking at. Um, yeah, so there you can see that's close to our party room. Um, so our party room will be where we'll host birthday parties. Um, classes can come in and have field trips and use the gym as a supplemental activity. Uh, there you'll see some of our swings and our climbing apparatus, uh, our rock wall, and you will also see our calming room. So just for a place where kids who may become overstimulated, they can go in there and, you know, decompress and then join us back in the gym. And you have a lot of books there, I see, and a lot of uh, uh, learning uh, activities going on. Yes. Yes. So there you'll see all of our Melissa and Doug activities that are for sale and that we have throughout our gym as well. All right, and you said it's, it's not, it's for all kids, for all kids, all kids are welcome there. And I see you got a lot of, a lot of little things they can play on and have a lot of fun. Now, have you visited any of the other franchise uh, gyms around the country? Yes, so uh, we have visited the one in Jacksonville, Florida, um, also the one in Columbus. Um, so there's one not too far from us. Mm -hmm. uh, so kind of right in our backyard. And so do you think you're going to have a lot of uh, uh, people interested in something like this? Uh, what do you think? Uh, that's definitely our hope. You know, um, a big thing for We Rock the Spectrum is playing with a purpose. Um, so we want to make sure that kids are uh, filling their sensory need as uh, they might need. So, for example, we have a 50 foot zip line. Um, so it's also fun, but it's also for a purpose um, to make sure that kids are knowing where they are in space and yeah. being able to fulfill that need. And it gives them a little courage also, you know, if they can do that and yes. the other kids cheer them on, it gives them a little bit of extra ump in there, you know, makes them feel a little, Absolutely. <laughs> a little more brave, <laughs> braver than they already are. So that, that, that's a pretty good little setup you have there. And the grand opening was yesterday. And uh, what are the hours uh, uh, of the kids gym? Yep, so uh, Monday through Friday, it'll be uh, nine to seven and Saturdays from 10 to 6 and Sundays from 10 to 5. Okay. Now you have to follow the same protocols as a, uh, say, a, a place, that, a workout gym or something like that the, as far as the COVID-19? Uh, absolutely. So all of our staff and parents will be wearing masks. Um, kids will be wearing masks as they um, can tolerate it um, because they'll also be playing and things like that. So we don't want them to become too upset. What's the address? However, uh, Give us the address and phone number real quick. Yep, so the address is 4060 East Galbraith. Uh, so we're right in the Dillon Vale Plaza. And our phone number is 513-429-5905.
All right. Well, I want to thank you for joining me this morning. We appreciate it and good luck. And uh, I'll have to stop by and see you guys one day. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for joining me. Let's take a break. We'll come back with Phil Heimlich in a moment. And we are back, and as promised, my good friend Phil Heimlich. Phil Heimlich, welcome to the show this morning. How you doing? Lincoln, it's been a long time. It's good to see you. Yes, yeah, good to see you. And I saw a big article in the paper the other day. I uh, had in there, Republicans against Trump. And it had your name there. I'm like, Phil Heimlich, the, the, the hardcore Republican that follows the Republican line, he's actually stepping out and going against Trump, and he's got a whole organization backing him there. So what's up with that? Tell us about that, uh, Phil. Well, you know, being a Republican or conservative is more than just a name only. And, you know, they use the term rhino, and I think Donald Trump is the biggest rhino uh, I've ever seen. Uh, he's closer to Vladimir Putin, I think, than he is to the American people. And uh, basically, he's corrupt. And I don't think being corrupt or being a compulsive liar is a conservative value. And um, I think he unfortunately has too many Republican enablers, including our current senator and the, our representatives here from this area who just don't have the guts to stand up to him. It's very sad to me. I think that I think the most um, the weakest, most cowardly group of politicians in the world today are the Republicans in the United States Congress. And I refuse to, to be like that. Uh, I, my conscience tells me this guy is a danger to our freedoms. He's a danger to uh, the Republic. He has undermined the rule of law. He's attacked free speech. And to me, country comes before party. And if we put country first, we need to get rid of this guy. D did you vote for Trump? I mean, when did you realize that this, did you vote for him? Actually, I didn't vote for him because I knew he was corrupt in 2016. The man had like 3,500 lawsuits. He'd been cheating people his whole career. And I wasn't a big Hillary fan, but frankly, I chose her. I'd rather have somebody who I disagree with on the issues, but who is not, a, frankly, a complete crook compared to a guy who's been scamming people his whole life. You know, I, when I was a prosecutor, I used to prosecute con men. And I know one when I see one, and that man is a con man. Now, tell me this. What about the other Republicans that I'm sure you've been great friends with all along that uh, are still following Trump? Do they what do they say to you? They say, what are you doing, Phil? You losing your mind? What are you talking about? Republicans against Trump. What are you doing here? Well, Operation Grant that I'm one of the leaders of, which is a partner with the Lincoln Project and Republican voters against Trump. And these are all national organizations composed of Republicans, including many conservatives that are opposed to Trump and are urging people actually to vote for Biden this fall. So I'm not alone. I'm not the only one in the country. You know people like George Will and Bill Kristol who are very prominent Republican or ex-Republican conservatives that are saying the same thing, that this man is a danger to the, to the Republic. Truthfully, you know what, Lincoln? You know, there's a lot of Republicans that come to me and come to other people in our group and they say, look, I really admire what you're doing. I, I just can't afford to stick my neck out. I just can't afford to say anything. Well, to me, uh, those people are cowards. And that's very that's a harsh statement. But we have too many cowards in the Republican Party that know better. I call them the enablers. Or to use an expression my late mother used to use, used to refer to good Germans, which are an expression for people who epitomize the phrase, the only thing necessary for evil to succeed is for good men to do nothing. And I might add good women. That's why we have such cowardly senators like Susan Collins and Cory Gardner and Mitch McConnell. They know better. They know how corrupt this guy is, but they don't have the guts to say anything. Why don't they have the guts to say anything? I mean, what what could Trump do to to Mitch McConnell? I mean, he, he, he's a Senate majority leader. I mean, he's got a lot of power. What could Trump do to him? Well, in fairness, and same thing applies to Rob Corbin here in Ohio. I tell you what they're afraid of one tweet, one negative tweet from Trump, and suddenly they have a primary opponent in their next election. Or if they have the ambitions to run for president, they cross Trump and the, and the Republican base is done with them. So what we need is people like we saw during the Watergate hearings, if you remember William Cohen from Maine or Lowell Weicker from Connecticut, or for that matter, go back to the McCarthy hearings 
in 19 in the 50s when you had Margaret Chase Smith, who was another Republican that stood up to Joe McCarthy. The problem is we don't have any Margaret Chase Smiths in the Senate or in the Congress today. Maybe Mitt Romney is the only one that has the courage yeah. to stand to what's right. Hold on, Phil. Let me take a quick break and then we'll come right back with more in a moment. And we are back with my good friend Phil Heimlich and uh, Phil, you're landing. What about uh, Steve Shabbat? He's a nice guy. I like him, but I think he falls into that same boat as Mitch McConnell. Yeah, with all respect, I've always liked Steve and he's always been helpful to me in my career. I don't want to sound like a backstabber, but frankly, he's got no guts. Uh, he knows better. He knows a lie when he sees it. Uh, he knows that uh, Trump is corrupt. Look, the, the transcript showed he said to the president of Ukraine, I want you to investigate Joe Biden. I mean, what more do you need? John Bolton, who's always been a conservative icon, he says that Trump asked the president of China to buy more wheat from us to help him in the next election. I mean, come on. What more do you want? Uh, you know, we, we have too many people like Shabbat and Wenstrup and others that, frankly, uh, are turning a blind eye to the dishonesty of this president. And what, what's, what's going on with what he's trying to do with the post office before the election? He's got his henchmen up there running the post office. They're trying to run it in the ground before the election. And he's already saying that it's going to be a, a rigged election. It's a fraud. And we might have prob If he loses the election, we're going to have a problem getting him out of the White House. It's a scary thing. You know what scares me, too, is what he's been talking about with Putin. He's had about eight conversations with him over the last two months never brought up the bounties that the Russians are paying the Taliban to kill American soldiers, never brought it up. Now, what did they talk about? I'm curious. It wouldn't surprise me if Putin let him know that the fit, that he'll take care of things like he did in 2016. Yeah. Um, but I'll tell you something. What, what, scare, what, what, what is scary to me, uh, Lincoln, is the fact that, um, you know, Trump, well, I'll tell you, this whole defund the police thing, I think, is, is, is playing right into Trump's hands. I think when you have looting like they've had in several cities, when you have people attacking constantly, uh, attacking the police, defund the police, all that does is give yeah. the president the law and order issue. And unfortunately, voters will generally choose, choose order over freedom. Yes. That scares me. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if these people who are looting in Chicago, I wouldn't be surprised if they're being paid by somebody to do this. You know, it just seems like you're right. It's falling right into Trump's hand, this law and order. It runs right along his commercials that he's running. So this falls right in line with that. I wouldn't be surprised if the Russians or somebody were paying these people. Well, I'll tell you something that we do know. We do know that it was Republican operatives that got Kanye West on the ballot in Ohio and other states. So what does that tell you? They're obviously trying to put him out there and use him to attract African-American votes away from Biden. I mean, that's a that's an open and shut deal there. And I hope uh, voters in the African-American community and throughout this country will see through that. Yeah. I think Kamala Harris was a great choice because of the fact she has a background in law enforcement. I think that offsets a lot of the uh, uh, anti-police attitude that you see on behalf of a lot of folks these days. So I think that was a great choice. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I am worried about people and the Kanye West thing. He might, you know, he's so popular. His wife is popular. They got a lot of people on, uh, you know, Twitter and uh, Instagram, Facebook, and they could just sway the minds of these young voters like you wouldn't believe. And he, he may, he might not win Ohio, but he could, he could spoil it for Joe Biden. He could, and that, that, that's one of the things that scares me. But just to tell you real quickly what Operation Grant is, that's the organization that I'm helping lead here. We have three former, <clears throat> three former Republican county chairmen in Ohio that um, are helping lead this. Uh, let me tell you why we call it Operation Grant. General Ulysses Grant was from Ohio, and in fact, he had a relatively average career but he rose to the moment in the Civil War and helped and win, won the Civil War for the North. We are calling on Republicans throughout the state to rise to the moment 
and stand up to Donald Trump and say, no, we, we, we made a mistake the first time. We're not going to make it again. Have you talked to Alex Triantafilu uh, about this lately? I have not lately. And if I did, I would probably keep it confidential because I respect him. But with all due respect for Alex, I would love to see somebody like Alex. I'd love to see more Republican chairmen or chairwomen have the guts to stand up and say, I'm done with this guy. One of our leaders in our uh, Operation Grant is Chris Gagan. Now, this guy was the chairman in Belmont County of the Republican Party. And after Trump uh, abased himself, in the words of John McCain at the Helsinki uh, summit when he said that he he believed Vladimir Putin over our own intelligence agency. And Phil, we will have to stop it right there. I'm out of time, man. I wish I had more time with you, but we'll get you back on again. I never thought I'd see today when Phil Heimlich was going against the Republican grain. But thank you for joining me. Thank you, my friend. All right, we'll talk to you. That's going to wrap it up for me. I'll see you next Sunday morning, 6:30 on Star 64. You have yourself a great week. Check me out Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 12 noon on 101.5 The Buzz, and Sunday afternoons from 3 until 7 on 100.3 Cincy's R&B Station with the Sunday Soul Classics. Until next Sunday morning, have yourself a great week. <laughs>